Well, you might have caught this. The American version of So You Think You Can Dance recently had its fifth season premiere. And for the first time in the history of the reality TV dance show, a ballroom couple consisting of two male dancers auditioned for the chance to compete for the crown of America's favorite dancer. Misha, who identifies as gay, and Mitch, who's straight, were pretty good ballroom dancers, except for a bad fall at the end of their audition. But the reaction of the judges to their pairing was anything but favorable... Here's a taste. I don't really know what to say. Um, it was a bit like watching Will Ferrell in Blades of Glory, really. Um, your styles were good, if I just stick with the dancing. I, I think you probably alienate a lot of our audience. I'm certainly one of those people that really like to see guys be guys and girls be girls on stage. I don't think I liked it. Well, that was Judge... <laughs> That was Judge Nigel Lithgow, also the producer of So You Think You Can Dance. He later issued a public statement apologizing for his comments after GLAAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, mounted a media campaign demanding an apology. Lithgow's comments come on the heels of a surprise win on the eighth season of another TV reality hit, American Idol, where millions vote for their favorite pop, in, uh, pop star in the making, like you don't know what American Idol is. The surprise came when the more sexually ambiguous but talented Adam Lambert Nick, nicknamed Glambert, lost to a folksier, married, arguably less talented singer Chris Allen. Today we're asking if Judge Nigel Lithgow is right or is reality t television and its audience ready for a, a gay reality icon? Rex Harrington is an internationally renowned ballet dancer and guest judge on the first season of So You Think You Can Dance Canada. He's here with me in Studio Q. Hello, sir. Hello. And Rachel Giza is a cultural observer and current senior editor of Chatelaine magazine, and she's here as well in Studio Q. Hello. Hello. Well, uh, let's kick Rex. What's your reaction to Nigel Lithgow's comments? Um, on one level, I thought if you're going in as a gay pairing or whatever, one straight, one gay, one of them should have taken the lead. I think that was his big comment. No one knew who was leading. Um, well, they claimed they were taking, they were sharing. The lead. I couldn't tell. I actually saw it. I mean, I don't think they were great dancers. I don't think that uh, you know alienate your audience. I'm just wondering who he thinks his audience is. It's not you know all the Christians reading their Bible watching So You Think You Can Dance, I don't think, who are worried about two men dancing together. I mean, I don't know why he would go after them like that. So I found it a bit odd. Just odd? Were you shocked? Were you, I wasn't so shocked. I mean, I, I think that it's, you know, they allow other people to come on. And, uh, you know, I too would like, whether you're gay or straight, I don't like to see um, effeminate dancing on stage. I mean, I, I think that when I'm coaching guys who are doing Romeo and Juliet or something like that, you can't prance around the stage in a certain in, in a certain sense so to to a degree i can agree with some of the things he was saying but i don't think that because there were two guys dancing together he should attack them quite so heavily okay interesting i want to get to some of what you said first rachel uh what did you make of nigel Lithgow's comments well i mean i didn't find it shocking from him i mean i think the show for all that it wants to play with genre and play with discipline so i mean i think part of the thrill of the show is seeing you know how someone who is a, a classically trained ballet dancer handles a hip-hop routine or see somebody who's a tap dancer do a viennese waltz so i think part of it is you want to sort of expand people's ideas of, of these various you know forms of dance um, and I also think that um, ballroom dancing can perhaps be and I mean Rex can correct me can be a more conservative form because it's all partner dancing and so I think that there are these ideas about you have male and female and but I thought it was interesting when he said you know I like guys to be guys on stage and girls to be girls to suggest that two men dancing together could not be masculine or wouldn't be two men mm -hmm. you know that, mm -hmm. that that for a man and a man to dance together one would have to be the girl. I mean, I, I think that it sort of showed the limitations of that show. It wants to push the boundaries of dance, but not that far. And I actually think it could be quite interesting if they did have same-sex partnerings on the show, whether they were romantic dances or not. I'm somewhat surprised by the reaction of you two. I mean, if you saw it, if you watch it, he, uh, Nigel Lithgow, I mean, if you put it in a broader context... I, the minute they start performing, first of all, it was trumped up by the show itself. Right. They, you know, the, it's raining men. They play that song. They make a big deal of these <laughs> yeah. two guys walking in, right? And maybe well, that's kind of the fun. Editing, having been yeah. on these shows, we <laughs> well, know what's I'm going to ask on. you yeah. about that in a minute, Rex. But while they're performing, Nigel Lithgow sort of shaking his head and laughing at them, mm -hmm. almost. Uh, you know, I don't want to be the one to de mm -hmm. demonize him. I'm, I'm asking mm -hmm. you to, but almost in a schoolyard kind of way, mm -hmm. like, oh, look mm -hmm. at these two guys dancing. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but that's but, that, but I think I wasn't surprised because he's done that before. I mean, he is he is he is kind of a homophobic guy on the show. This is not the first time he's been uncomfortable around suggestions of of gay sexuality on the show. So um, what I think, and I agree with Rex, is when he said, you know, you're going to alienate some of our audience. I just don't think that that audience would be that alienated by two guys dancing together. I really don't. I really don't think that the the, the hard. And I think most of the audience is twelve year old girls, anyways, and they're probably enjoying it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but he's the producer of the show, yeah. so is this know, some attempt to grapple with what he thinks the mainstream audience will will accept? Well, he in wouldn't America? put them on. I think it was just a ratings thing then. If he knew that was coming out. Um, maybe he had an agenda, I don't know, but I, I think it's a wrong platform to be attacking, you know, um, and for me, sometimes I know I do, when you're watching, um, ballroom dancers, there's already, you know, this plasticine sort of smile, this effeminate arms, and, and, and sometimes I watch those men doing ballroom and I find it too effeminate myself, like, you know, there's, there's levels of it, and, um, you know, if you watch, uh, Dancing with the Stars, to see these guys come out who have absolutely no talent and find something, um, gay or straight, but, I still think you can go on stage and be masculine, but um, I, so, I mean, I'm just digging myself a grave here, but I still think there's a sense of- But it's um, a point you've made before, Rex. On affectation the, during dance. On the all. first season of but So You Think You Can Dance Canada, you were a judge on, on Sunday, yeah. as you said, and, and, and winner Nico Archambault, who's been here, was right. was applauded by you as well mm -hmm. for being a particularly masculine dancer. Yeah, I, I thought, and, and that's what's so great, because when I auditioned for the National Ballet School, I was this little kid in my blue under and my tights and this little page boy haircut, and I was scared, and I was the only guy in there, and my mother shoved me into it, and I thought, what the hell am I doing here? And, you know, there were only, you know, and I didn't even know I was gay then, right? But you go where, you know, I guess you need to express yourself. <laughs> and I think that nowadays to see people like Nico and Miles on stage and to to see them dance and that it's okay for men to dance like you know butch guys can dance to right. effeminate guys can dance to I think that's great I think we've come a long way in that sense but where's the line can't saying you look good because you look masculine be code for straight acting we like the fact that you not look necessarily I, I I, I I would agree that I don't like to see effeminate mm -hmm. dancing on stage. You haven't mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I when I danced on stage and I did Romeo, I think people believe that you know it's Romeo and Juliet, not Romeo and Romeo. You know, and and I'm. Uh, homosexual. But there's not yeah. only but, one way right. to ballroom dance. Right. right? And, I mean, and I would disagree with you a little bit there because I do think on the show that effeminate is a code for gay. I mean, I do think that the fears about having effeminate male dancers on the show. No, because are, you could be straight and be effeminate. Sure, but it, I. You can be really I, over the top. But I know? do think that for some of the judges on the show, there has been this sense of wanting really to um, sell dance to straight male audiences. And, you know, there were, there were two dancers last year on the American version of So You Think You Can Dance. And one referred to the other one as a pansy at one point, and mm -hmm. it was sort of joking. But I think that there was th there. I think there was some anxiety for some of the guys on the show um, that, like, like you were oh, saying, yeah. that dancing I mean, meant that they were gay and they didn't want to be read as gay. Yeah, and they double up their efforts to be like, hey, <clears throat> you know, like you know, I don't pad my dance belt. You know, it's right. like I'm a guy. You know, it's like, <laughs> I don't know. But, I, I, but Rachel, are we saying that it's okay for for pop icons and dancers to be gay as long as they don't look like they're they they're, they might be? As well, long I don't as they don't I'm, look effeminate. Yeah, I don't think I'm saying that, but I think that that certainly is is coded. I mean, I think that um, you know, again, on I mean, I think that something different happened. If I can, t we could talk about um, American Idol with yeah, Adam we Lambert, can segue into that. Yeah, um, is that I think that um, what I thought was interesting was I, I felt like he really refused. Both he and Chris Allen um, really refused to buy into to the culture war that the producers were trying to set up on the show. And mm -hmm. so in the final episode, you know, the line that Ryan Seacrest threw out was, you know, it's guy liner versus the that guy That bothered next me, the and whole it, yeah. glam liner, guy liner, because yeah. that's, that, that, in a sense, is... You know, there's there's a lot of straight men wearing eyeliner. I mean, Nico had a lot of eyeliner on, so you think he nets. Right. And I really thought, but I knew in the end going into it, I thought, you know, America can vote for a black president, and that's a big stretch. But they can't accept someone who's inter entertainment being a gay <laughs> icon. I, it, it's sort of a really weird standard. So I, you I couldn't think get that it. The, I thought he was going to win you, based on his talent. You think his, that the idea that Adam Lambert was 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 gay and it was just a, a notion I, 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 actually uh, until this well, weekend he said apparently he's going to he's coming out now officially yeah. in in Well uh, thank in God Stone because Blake Cake and we all knew and it <laughs> took I mean what's his name? Uh, it took him forever and now he's having a baby and whatever but you know why why go along with that? Until we have positive role models who can come out and be who they are and and be in that arena 
And there's a lot of little kids out there. And in the States, there was this whole thing about these two young boys who killed themselves because they were bullied. And Oprah went on, and they were all talking about bullying. And it wasn't about bullying. It was the fact that these young boys who were slightly effeminate or whatever, or liked arts, were bullied and called gay. But no one mentioned the fact that we need to make it okay and acceptable for kids to understand mm -hmm. that that's just the same thing as calling a black person you know, a derogatory name, in a sense. And, and that's what the culture has to be. And if you can't have Adam Lambert come out and go, this is my boyfriend, and yeah, I'm going to make an album, and isn't that cool? I mean, Freddie Mercury and Queen, I mean, the band's called Queen, hello. Right. I mean, he, he has an amazing talent, and I think that's what we should be focusing on. So, um, gay or straight. But it, I didn't think America was going to go there, and in the end, they didn't. They chose, you know, safe and simple. So do you think America's choice, this wasn't then the, the, the producers, this was the public, general public. Uh, as soon as the decision was made and Adam Lambert didn't win, there were a lot of calls that this this was uh, uh, evidence of, of generalized homophobia in the, in the public, in the American public, in mm -hmm. their voting pattern. Do you think that's true? I, I think that's probably what happened, because for me, Adam had a spectacular performance every time he went on stage. And uh, I think Chris was... Is it Chris? Yeah. He was more middle of the road to me. And that's more marketable in a sense. That's more John Mayer. That's more, whereas every time Adam stepped on the stage, he was a showman. He had control. He had an amazing technique. And I think that should have won out. And in the end, I really think it did come down to to his his highlighter, you know, like and his nail polish. What do it you was, think, Rachel? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. I mean, it could be a factor. I think that um, you know, clearly there wasn't that much homophobia, given that Adam Lambert made it all the way to the final two. I That's mean, clearly yeah. that you yeah, know you right. got that far. Yeah. Um, I think that you know, I, I think the show um, really pimped Adam Lambert early on and said that you're a front runner and you're going to be in the finals. And um, and I, and I wonder if there was an underdog dog effect that could have happened with Chris. Allen. I wonder if Chris Allen ultimately won over the twelve-year-old girls. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I, and I don't. We don't. We don't know what the difference in votes were either. I mean, whether it was a landslide or not. I mean, I definitely think that Adam Lambert's sexuality came into play on the show. And I, like I was saying earlier, well, I mean, I'm glad he's coming out because at, at a certain point, I feel like his coyness just becomes a bit obnoxious. Yeah. Um, but I do. Th I do like the fact that those two guys really did everything they could to play down this culture war setup. Because again, like what Rex was saying, why can't the guy next or be wearing eyeliner? Why Like, why does it have to be an either-or kind of thing? And I really love the fact that you had this guy who was obviously gay with his eyeliner and his nail polish and his whole glammy thing talking about his drag queen friends, and this guy who was a church-going, Christian, married guy really seemed to like each other, really seemed to support each other, hugged each other. I mean, they seemed to really want to not be put in these simple terms. But Adam Lambert, straight. not unlike Clay Aiken, mm -hmm. you imagine, didn't feel comfortable for well, maybe mm -hmm. he just didn't want to, but mm -hmm. you know one could also surmise that he didn't mm -hmm. feel comfortable mm -hmm. coming out before the end of well, a the, lot the, of it comes the competition down to, comes down to the bottom line is how much money you're going to make. You know, people come out after they've had their careers. I mean, I think. I, I'm naive in the fact that sometimes I really have to wonder that it was never hard for me. I went to the National Ballet School. Everyone was there was talented. I just lived my life. And it, it I never came out. I was who I was, and it just evolved. And I've always been open about that. But then I think there are young children suffering across the country who there is that blatant homophobia going on. And, and that's why in, in things we look to and kids are looking at, uh, if it's a blatant homophobia, then I, I think it should be stopped. It's because there's level. people yelling at them, telling them to be to be more masculine. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fault. Put it up, guys. Yeah, yeah. Right. You're to blame for homophobia I, and dance. It's me. I, I just, you know, I started but, it all. <laughs> there is. I'm a... going back in the closet. And you got an announcement to make. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm going in now. Re-entering. Re-entering Re the closet. The closet. <laughs> uh, but you know, there, it's, it's sad. There, it's there, sad. There does seem to be some divisions. I mean, there are some reality TV shows in the post Ellen world, if you will, <laughs> that uh, like Project One Runway, I'm thinking of, and, and, and Next Top Model, that include gay, lesbian, transgender people. Mm -hmm. But it, so does it? Does it matter when when it's the the medium that we're talking about? So, but if you want to be a rock star, if you mm -hmm. th then you have to be more careful about whether you come out beforehand, yeah, uh, it, as opposed it, to a designer. It's interesting. I mean, I've seen interviews with Adam Lambert. It's kind of interesting because I do think that, that perhaps the producers told him maybe not to be as out. I'm. It's not. You don't. You don't know. I don't right. know. Um, and I wonder too if he just did not want to be a role model, if he was somebody who felt like I want it to be about my music, I don't want this to be a cultural referendum, I do not want this to be. But at the same time, 
I mean, anybody who knows anything knows Adam Lambert was gay. I mean, you you had to be completely in the dark to not realize it. And, you know, he would say things on the show. And, you know, when Bill O'Reilly came out and he he did this thing about the Adam Lambert photos of him kissing a guy right. came out. And Adam Lambert didn't deny it. He didn't apologize. He made no statement for it. And when you talked about Bill O'Reilly, Bill O'Reilly says something like, these embarrassing photos have surfaced of Adam Lambert kissing a guy. And Adam Lambert's response was, I'm not embarrassed. Maybe Bill O'Reilly's embarrassed, but <laughs> I'm not embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So I feel like all along, he never, I mean, I felt like, and, you know, perhaps he had his eye on the bottom line as well. Perhaps he thought, you know what, if you want to know about my sexuality, give me the cover of Rolling Stone. Give me a big platform that I can sell an album or on. Or wait I mean, until I win the idol. Wait until I win the idol and I'll come out. I mean, yeah. who, you know, who knows how much of it was, I don't, I don't think that he did this kind of, um, look how wholesome I am or had a right. beard girlfriend or anything like that. I just that. hope we get to the point one day where we don't have to discuss people's sexuality and you can be mm -hmm. who you are and be well, what, what it is. And, and, you know, and it's like they said last week and Prop 8 was being in the Supreme Court and there was a huge debate on, you know, right for marriage and not marriage on, on the thing. And, and somebody just said it's it's going to be um, generational. You know, anyone voting under 40, give it another 10 years. Right. We, it's slowly marriage is coming across mm -hmm. the states. It's coming. So right. mm -hmm. I think we're getting there, but yeah. I think having these discussions, yeah. it's still, it's still I, I guess I live in a bubble. It still shocks me that we're so uh, afraid. But let's know? let's end off with just trying to get grapple with where we are, in fact, at. Mm -hmm. Because we seem to be saying two things here, or we've mm -hmm. said a couple of things. Mm -hmm. like this. On the one hand, Nigel Lithgow, uh, N Nigel Lithgow's comments, we, we talked about being somewhat out of step with his mm -hmm. audience. You know, he's saying uh, the audience won't accept mm -hmm. this and, and kind of going, well, this seems like a conservative sentiment. On the other hand, Adam Lambert didn't win. And you're saying, Rex, that sometimes you have to protect uh, yourself from coming out uh, so that for Sponsors, etc. Well, I know so people which, who have protected themselves. Sure. So, so, so where where are we at? I think. Well, I think that's exactly. Where, I mean, I think we're at a really contradictory time. I mean, I think we're at a time when you you, you put Ellen DeGeneres on the cover of People magazine saying she's married and everyone loves her, and you could not find a more popular. Um, pop culture figure right now than Ellen DeGeneres. And at the same time, all kinds of Americans are denying gay, gay couples the right to marry. You know, at the same time, you have Adam Lambert singing on American Idol, Change is going to come. <laughs> you know, you have the American the American president, the first black president, you know, dragging his heels on, on re, um, repealing uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So I think that we're at a time when, you know, these, these two forces are kind of meeting each mm -hmm. other, and there are a lot more people out, and yet there's still homophobia. Mm -hmm. that, that certain shows are well, there's, all, the and, and and there's always been that in Hollywood too. There's always the pink mafia, you know, yeah. and the, right. they're running Hollywood. But until <laughs> a major sports player or a major actor or someone comes out and says, you know what, this is who I am, but it doesn't affect what my, what I do. It's mm -hmm. it's part of who I. There's going to be kids growing up who are still going to be going in a closet and hanging themselves because they're being bullied. Mm -hmm. And I, I just hope that yeah. all changes and that we can accept on a dance show that two guys can dance together. Right. You know. Well, to be continued, it, it is a it is a difficult time. We are in that you know it's a, it's a time when someone like a, a Canadian da dance icon like Rex Harrington can be a role model to a lot of gay men, and yet still be re-entering the closet <laughs> at the same time. You know, it's very sad. And then I'll come out again, and it'll be a huge coming out party because I never had one really. I want to know what that's like. <laughs> I want the cover of McLean's. Yep, I'm gay, just like Ellen. <laughs> Guess what? Casey didn't know. Have six babies coming too from China. Okay. <laughs> Thank. Thanks to you both. So we continue. Rex Harrington is the artist in residence at the National Ballet of Canada. Rachel Giza, senior editor at Chatelaine Magazine. Both guests were with me here in Studio Q.